We often say that Tampa Bay is one of the most philanthropic cities. And, and here on the Morning Blend, we're able to highlight a lot of those organizations. And, and one person we've gotten to know through a pediatric cancer awareness event is now with us for an event that is near and dear to my heart as well. Nicole Stokes joins us talking about Crohn's and Colitis Foundation today. Nicole, how are you? I'm doing great. And thanks so much for having me just so we can spread more awareness about this upcoming event, but about the, um, the disease in general. You know, Nicole, I, I love your work in the community. And when we were getting involved, of course, we are board members of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation here in my house. And I saw your name come across as this year's honoree for our uh, normal gala. I couldn't wait to talk with you again because I know Crohn's and Colitis of course, has a very personal meaning and story, which is so important with these diseases that a lot of times people don't want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the, um, you know, it's not the dinner table conversation for sure, uh, but it's so important that we do talk about it just to normalize it, especially for the youth that are impacted by this disease. They need to know that they have a safe place that they can talk about some of the challenges they're dealing with, some of um, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically, that they just have a safe place to do so. So, Nicole, of course, um, you yourself have Crohn's disease, but right now doing well, which we're so happy to hear about. But this even goes further. Uh, I know the genetic connection firsthand to irritable bowel disease. Unfortunately, you now know the genetic component, right? Yeah. Yeah. Recently, um, my oldest daughter, Callie, and we call her Callie Cutie, was diagnosed with Crohn's this past fall, so 2019. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't gotten her in remission yet, but we're working on it. But just, gosh, I was thinking about the process um, th that I went through to get diagnosed and how much research and how much um, new ways of, of getting diagnosed where it was less invasive for her, which I was 100% grateful for. Oh, I, I know exactly what you mean when you talk about invasiveness that these diseases sometimes bring. And I've already touched on the fact that they're mm -hmm. considered silent diseases because, as you said, they're not dinner table conversations. No, but no. talking about this is key. Stepping forward, though, in the spotlight as an honoree like yourself this fall, why did you want to be an honoree and why did you say yes to be able to be involved this year? Yeah, you know, I actually struggled with that. My dear friend, who's also a board member, asked me if I would be open to having a conversation about it. And at first, I, you know, for full transparency, I didn't know if I wanted everyone to know that I had this, this illness. I didn't want people to treat me differently because of it. But then I realized that in order to bring more awareness to it and to change the norm of how we view this, I actually had to be that person that went out there and say, look, I can live a healthy life. I can still um, raise three beautiful kids, have a business, be involved in the community, with this illness, and it's because of the research and all of the new treatment options and the support that I receive that I'm able to do that. So uh, it was important to me to normalize it. So I want my my daughter to know that it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to sometimes have bad days and tell someone you have a bad day, but then also just rock those really good days too. And so I said yes to um, to be a role model for her, but also for a lot of the other people diagnosed. And then I wanted to honestly use a lot of my, my network to um, help raise more money for this because there could be a cure. There absolutely could be a cure. Just the advancements we made in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, we could do so much more. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And they say that maybe a, a cure is in our lifetime, which is really yes. exciting because so many people suffer with irritable bowel diseases. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. If people do yeah. want to give, of course, it is one of those uh, organizations, 501c3, that the money really does go helping to fund the mission. Two events, though, because of the pandemic, our calendar got switched around. The first one, <laughs> a virtual take steps, which a little twist on a very popular event. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually um, sponsored this event in the, in the past, been a captain of a team. Um, and so now we get to do it from the safety of your own community. So um, we're asking people to grab a team, get people to sign up, take a walk around their neighborhood together. It's going to take place October 18th at noon. Um, and so we hope that people will join us in this, you know, healthy way of getting out there and spreading more awareness about this. And even if you can't um, necessarily walk that day, you could still give. Absolutely. And then fast forward the gala. I love the gala each year. Known for Toast for a Cure here in Tampa Bay, but it's exciting because we're partnering with the Orlando chapter, chapter to create even more awareness. Night of Hope, Toasting for a Cure. That's where you are going to be the honoree. 
Yes, I am. And this is, I mean, I will say it's different because um, I don't know what this is going to look like virtually, um, but it's really exciting that we can still bring awareness. Um, something that I love that we say is even though the event might be virtual, our mission is not. And so we're still doing, we're taking this, this mission to the streets, even though we might be doing this from the safety of our home. Um, but that event's actually going to take place on November 7th. Um, and it'll be fun. Like, so you should, you should buy a ticket. If you have not got a ticket, you're going to miss out. You're going to have FOMO for sure. I like that FOMO for sure. Yeah, my husband and I are actually going to be involved in it too. So we can't wait to start working on that virtual event. Nicole, it is great to see you. A big thank you from me personally, of course. Uh, as you know, my family is impacted by Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, but a thank you from the community as well. You're doing great work. Can't wait to see you soon, okay? Thank you guys for having me. You bet. And of course, the website is on the bottom of the screen. If you want to learn more or give, we can never say that enough. See you soon, Nicole. Bye.